Hi, my name is Sue Wickstead and I write children's books and they're based on a real bus. So I'm going to read you the start of my writing journey and this is JJ the Supersonic Bus, the real JJ. He's now got a storybook of his own and there it is, JJ the Supersonic Bus. JJ the Supersonic Bus and it's written for my two children, Tom and Ellie, who... If they'd never gone to the playgroup, I'd never have met the real JJ, the supersonic bus. This one. This is the bus we want. It had been a while since JJ had felt wanted. He remembered how he'd once been an ordinary bus, taking passengers on their many journeys. JJK, Route B. More recently, JJ had begun to feel tired and old. He might break down, splutter to a halt, or just not start properly in the morning, and he'd been sent to the dreary, dusty scrapyard where all the old buses were sent to end their days. This made him feel useless and unwanted. He prepared himself to stand alone and miserable, gathering dust, or worst of all, left to rust. You see, he's in the scrapyard. Nobody wants him anymore. How oh, sad. The only thing that had happened to him in the last few weeks had been a visit from some cheeky children who'd come along to play on him. They'd climbed inside and pretended to be bus drivers. They'd been a little bit rough and boisterous as they played, running noisily up and down the stairs. But JJ hadn't minded too much. He was enjoying their adventure. He was glad of their company and he was just knew they were just using their imagination. But the angry man in the breakers yard didn't think so. He chased them away with shouts of too dangerous, not safe. Dangerous, JJ thought to himself. Not safe? Why am I not safe? The words hurt him and sadly JJ resigned himself to being left alone with only the spiders spinning webs for company. But today was different. He'd watched as three people had arrived at the scrapyard. They looked around at all of the buses. He was worried that maybe they'd come to take a few of his pieces to break him apart. But no, they seemed to be muttering to the man in the yard about taking all of him. What do they want me for, JJ wondered. He listened curiously, trying to understand what was going on. The men were talking about children and play and he wondered if he was in trouble following the visit from his boisterous visitors. The conversation sounded interesting and JJ couldn't help but feel excited. There was a moment's pause. JJ held his breath, watching as the people talked among themselves, checking through their paperwork. And then, with a shake of the hand, was the deal was done. JJ breathed a sigh of relief. I wonder where I'm off to, he thought to himself. I hope it's better than this. One of the men climbed aboard, but it had been such a long time that it took a few spluttering attempts before JJ eventually grumbled into action. JJ felt nervous and excited. He had no idea where he was going, but he felt safe in the hands of the driver who steered him carefully out of the scrapyard and onto the busy roads. He made his way hesitantly. His joints were creaking a bit after being sat still for so long. He could feel his engine warming up and purring loudly, he drove along the dusty roads, taking in the sights and sounds. It had been so long since he'd been taken out for a drive and it was a lovely feeling to be moving again, with the feel of warm diesel through his pipes and the breeze through his radiator. He felt alive and excited. This is great being JJ to himself. There he is going along the busy roads. What a lovely feeling to be moving. There he is. After some time, JJ eventually came to a shuddering halt. He looked up at the important looking buildings and the huge garage doors in front of him. What is this place? wondered JJ. All was revealed as the doors noisily began to open. Lorries aeroplanes. This must be an airport. Can we careful? JJ had seen aeroplanes before, but not up close like this. 
They always look so small when flying over him high on in the sky. But here, on the ground, they towered over him on their huge wheels with their wings spread out wide. What am I doing here? He thought. He heard the voice of one of the mechanics echo across the hangar. Look, he called. Here's our magic bus. Magic bus, wondered JJ curiously. Surely they can't be talking about me. The words magic went through JJ's mind. What is so magic about me? The men were talking about children and play once again, of new houses and school holidays. They said that the children would need somewhere safe to play and that he was going to help out. Here, in the hangar where the aeroplanes were repaired, he was going to be turned into a play bus full of all the exciting things to help the children to play, a place full of imagination. He would drive to the children wherever they were. They, he would light up their lives with colour and happiness. Wow, thought JJ. I like children and I love to play. JJ was so excited. He would be getting a new life and a new purpose. He would not be broken down for scrap. And to JJ, this was the magic part. And so the work began. First task was to take out all the seats from inside the bus, both upstairs Don't run away. and downstairs. Don't run away. This is strange, thought JJ. Where will the children sit? But this was the exciting part. The children didn't need to sit down. He wouldn't need to drive them around. There were regular buses for that. Their journeys would be filled with play. Their journeys would be in their imagination. The next few weeks saw JJ transformed into a bright, colourful masterpiece. He was cleaned inside and given a bright, sparkly coat of paint. Upstairs, they put in a carpet area and the cupboards were built and stuffed full to the brim with exciting new toys to play with. There were toys and games, bricks for building, a train track, a doll's house, lots of soft toys. There were books to read and puzzles to put together. Best of all, there was a little home corner with tea sets and crockery. The cupboards there were full of fancy dress clothes and hats to dress up in. Everything to make the home cosy and warm. Downstairs, they made an area where children could paint, draw, make models with glue. Here they would do all the messy creative things. There was Play-Doh to squash, roll out and mould. There was even a sand pit too. This looks fun, thought JJ. You can't do that on a regular bus, can you? Now all they needed was make his outside bright and colourful too. This would attract the attention of the children and get them running to come and explore. Onto the outside a slide would be fitted where the children would climb up and race down from the bonnet of the bus. They'll love this, thought JJ. JJ was painted in bright, bold colours. It had pictures of children with smiling, happy faces. He was especially pleased that they painted an aeroplane along his sides. He was with his long sides. With his colourful new coat, JJ raced happily along the road beside the runway. He watched as the aeroplanes roared along, lifting into the sky and he wondered where they're off to. He would race along the road beside them, but no matter how fast he drove, and no matter how hard he tried to use those speed bumps to help him jump up high and fly, he stayed firmly on the ground. If only they'd fitted me with wings, sighed JJ. Oh well, I suppose my precious cargo of toys, I might be safer on the ground. But most importantly, he was given a new name. Of course, JJK261. It's just his registration number. His name was painted along the sides. Supersonic. I like my new name, thought JJ. And he knew he would fly in the imagination of his many friends. He might not actually be able to fly, but he knew it was a great reminder of his airport days and the fun that he had chasing the aeroplanes along the runway. Then after many weeks of work, JJ the supersonic bus was ready to meet the children. He felt a little bit sad to be leaving the airport, but he was also very excited to be getting a new life and a new start. 
When he saw all the smiling faces of the children who came out to meet him, he felt proud and happy to be helping out. He knew what an important job it was. He loved how the children laughed and played both inside and outside the bus and it made him feel tingly inside. Wherever he went, the children would run excitedly to see their play bus and they loved him. Look at the children playing beautifully inside and outside. Even on the bonnet. The children loved to paint and JJ the supersonic bus didn't mind getting a few splashes of paint over him or sand in the cracks. The children especially loved the slide. They loved to climb up onto the bonnet and imagine they were driving. It reminded him of the children in that dirty, dusty scrapyard all those months ago. With a warm shiver, he felt how lucky he was to have escaped being broken into pieces. Noisily or quietly, it didn't matter which. He was happy that they were having fun and so was he. There's the children playing. But a summer started to come to an end. There was talk of school and the number of children began to fall. What's going to happen to me now, he wondered. Will I be sent back to the scrapyard? I hope not. He would, of course, be sad if he had to go back there. But this had certainly been a great adventure and he'd made so many new friends. The children had loved him and he'd given them a fun and exciting place to play. Most of all, he felt loved and wanted again. And then suddenly, an important message arrived just in time. It was a message from the Queen. He'd been invited to Buckingham Palace where he was going to receive a special award for all of his hard work. Wow, thought JJ. Me, he thought. Can this really be true or is it just a dream? Surely it was he who should say thank you for being rescued and being able to meet so many children. He felt so pleased when he was given his bright, sparkly medal. He beamed proudly in the sunlight. Oh, what a great honour. The news of the award spread around town and many visitors came to see what all the fuss was about. They wanted to see the now famous JJ the supersonic bus. With the older children going back to school, JJ was going to be given a new adventure, providing a playgroup for the smaller children. The older children would never forget the fun they had thanks to JJ or the adventures, nor would he forget them. But for now, new adventure was going to begin and you know what JJ's adventure was that he went on to write lots more books so not just JJ the supersonic bus but he had an island adventure a carnival adventure and then along came Daisy which is another version a real play bus and a play bus really was a special place to play safely Hope you enjoyed the story and if you do look out to see if you can't find the other books maybe you might even see gloria which is the new book that's coming out this summer